Self-defense pistols are essential these days. With the crime rates going high here and there, it's kind of clear why more and more Americans want to invest in guns and learn how to shoot one at the same time. It's just a good thing that when it comes to self-defense firearms, the options are technically vast, and I'm not even exaggerating on that part. Just this Feb, the SHOT Show 2024, revealed new handguns viable for self-defense, tactical, or recreational pursuits. But of course, the likes of Glock, Sig Sauer, and Canik remain the tested and true options for most buyers. In a short while, we will discuss whether or not Canik is better than Glock for self-defense. But first, what's up everyone? This is your boy Ted from Line 45. In this episode, I am going to show some of the best 9mm defense pistols you can buy right now. Also, I am going to compare a Glock and a Canik pistol here to see which one you should get. Before we get underway, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I know it is a chore but these simple clicks help my channel immensely. Now, let's return to the video. Glock 17. First stop, we need to check out Glock 17. For many years, the Glock 17 has been one of the most trusted defensive pistols in the civilian market. Right now, millions of Americans are carrying them, and that even includes law enforcement and military personnel. This polymer-framed pistol can also be considered the bar in terms of reliability. Because really, even if it's not entirely perfect, the Glock 17, alongside other Glock pistols, can operate in any conditions. Got dirt in the barrel? It still shoots. It got wet? No problem. It can still shoot. Hence, it's not surprising that many firearms companies tried to replicate the performance of the Glock 17 and even went on to call themselves Glock killers. Whatever that means, really. The latest iteration of the Glock 17 is the Gen 5, or Glock simply called Glock 17 Gen 5. With the Gen 5, some innovations have been introduced to the pistol. Thankfully, part of the updates is the removal of the finger grooves. The new design also incorporates proprietary features, such as the Safe Action System, Glock Marksman Barrel, and the Modular Optics System. While it's true that Glock isn't the best firearms manufacturer in terms of innovation, these new technologies allow its Gen 5 pistols to remain relevant and even compete with the growing handgun market. In terms of capacity, the full-size Glock 17 isn't a loaded pistol. It boasts 17 plus 1 rounds of 9mm, which should give you sufficient stopping power in moments you actually need to defend yourself. The accuracy of this pistol is nice as well. It hits targets past 25 yards. The Glock 17 Gen 5 also has an upgraded trigger. It's still not as good as other striker-fired triggers, but it has improved substantially nonetheless. Still, I suggest that you replace it alongside the sights with aftermarket options in order to optimize the full potential of this pistol. Canik SFX Rival This time, let's check the Canik SFX Rival. This Canik pistol is oriented for competitions, but it works really well for self-defense. There are other Canik pistols you can check out, but both the SFX Rival and Glock 17 share almost the same dimensions, weight, and even pricing. The SFX Rival is slightly longer than the Glock 17 Gen 5. This Canik pistol spans 8.1 inches long, while the Glock 17 has a length of 7.95 inches. Moreover, the SFX Rival is also heavier than its counterpart, as this one weighs around 29.5 ounces, while the Glock 17 tips the scale around 25 ounces. The added length and weight mean that the SFX Rival has enhanced accuracy and controllability. The SFX Rival is an optics-ready pistol, and the package already includes several plates that should let you mount any compatible red dots. It's also user-friendly, as most of its controls are ambidextrous, such as the slide release and magazine release. Unlike the standard Glock, the SFX Rival lets you slap lights and lasers, thanks to its Picatinny rail which you can see on its bottom. You'll appreciate its double undercut trigger guard, as well as its removable external mag well. Capacity-wise, the Canik SFX Rival holds more rounds than the Glock 17. Its package includes two 18-round magazines, and you can also find some other goodies, such as back straps and mag release extensions. So which is better, Glock or Canik? To be honest, it's a bit unfair to compare the Canik SFX Rival and Glock 17, as the Canik pistol is just built differently. There are no current Glock pistols in production that can match its performance, quality, 
and even inclusions. So the best way to do this comparison is to check other guns from Canik, such as the Canik TP9SA. In terms of reliability, I can say that Glock 17 is a bit better than Canik, given that it has a reputation already. Of course, this doesn't mean that the Canik TP9SA is a faulty gun. It's just that similar to other Canik pistols, the TP9SA hasn't been long enough to have the reliability rapport of Glock. In actual range tests, there's a certainty that these two guns can run without malfunctions. Now, let's check the accuracy department. You can actually test these guns with a number of different ammo, and given that they are both full size, they can confidently hit at 25 yard distance. Similar to SFX Rival, the TP9SA comes close to Glock 17 when it comes to barrel length. Their locking mechanisms are virtually similar as well, so it isn't surprising the two produce the same degree of accuracy, though it feels like the TP9SA can handle defensive loads better than the Glock 17. Based on these things we discussed, I can't really say that Canik is entirely better than Glock. Maybe Canik comes ahead in terms of innovation, ergonomics, and features, but the overall reliability and accuracy aspects remain to be virtually equal. Of course, the performance may differ once we include the likes of SFX Rival or TTI Combat in the discourse. Nevertheless, both gun brands are great, and you'll be satisfied regardless of which one you pick. Now, let's proceed back to the list. SIG P226 SAO Legion I intended to put a spot for a SIG pistol here because who wouldn't? Of course, many of you might have thought that it is a spot I reserved for the P365. But honestly, the P365 is not the be-all and end-all of SIG Sauer pistols, especially if we are talking about self-defense handguns. Take a look at the P226 SAO Legion. As its name suggests, this is a single-action pistol, but you can also get a double-action version of this gun. The P226R SAO Legion comes with manual safety and incorporates various treatments exclusive to Legion handguns, such as enhanced frame checkering and finish, grip design, and X-Ray 3 sights. One thing I can say is that the SIG P226 SAO Legion is a high-end pistol, but its price isn't as overwhelming as Staccato or Nighthawk pistols. But at the same time, this isn't a cheap handgun at all. Of course, the cost of this gun is really justified. It undergoes rigorous testing, which has established its reliability and accuracy. Plus, it's a rugged pistol, one that can withstand and survive adverse conditions. It's also worth noting that the P226 SAO Legion is among the first service guns that incorporate simplicity in its construction. It's very easy to use and one that you can utilize efficiently in any situation. 17 rounds of 9mm should give you enough stopping power, while its crisp trigger keeps your shots precise and fast. Walther PPS M2 Also, I want you to check out the Walther PPS M2. It's often being ignored despite it being one of the most proficient handguns for self-defense. The PPS M2 is a good choice for concealed carry, and much of its design is optimized for ergonomics, or, you know, its overall shootability. There's a smooth, consistent trigger integrated into this pistol that allows shooters to fire the pistol with relative ease. Follow-ups are fast, though you need to expect that it gets snappy because of its light construction. Still, the gun remains easy to control, given that it's just chambered in 9mm. Besides, its profile is slim, which in turn lets you get a full grip and solid hold over the pistol. However, the Walther PPS M2 lacks the capacity that other guns, such as the P365, Glock 43X, or Hellcat offer. In particular, its capacity ranges from 6 to 8 rounds only, so depending on the situation, you may need to carry extra mags with you. It's just a good thing that this pistol shoots regardless of the condition. It has top-notch reliability, which should make it an excellent backup handgun. Now, if you think that the PPSM2 is too Spartan for your liking, you should check the all-new PDP Compact SF. The Compact SF was just launched during the SHOT Show 2024, and it got the goodies. It has the Walther Performance Duty Trigger and a rugged 4-inch barrel. Adapter plates are available for order, in case you want to run this pistol with optics. Unlike other PDP pistols, this one uses a steel frame, which has upped its weight significantly, even when fitted with an empty mag. This really made the gun a flat shooter, enabling you to make quick, accurate follow-ups. Springfield Echelon 
Another small 9mm pistol I highly recommend for self-defense is Springfield Echelon. It impressed many people during the time it was released, and this is no ordinary feat. After all, polymer-framed, striker-fired pistols are all over the place. Thus, it's really easy to get buried in the crowd. The Echelon boasts a modular design, which means that you can tweak it to become a gun that suits your preferences. The central control group of this handgun contains a serialized trigger. Of course, this means that you can change parts without having to undergo cumbersome licensing. There are three available back straps and grip sizes for the Echelon, so finding the right fit will never be difficult. Unlike the Walther PPS M2, the Echelon is a loaded gun, as its standard capacity is 10 rounds. But that doesn't stop there. You can fit the gun with 15, 17, and 20 round magazines. The Echelon, similar to other modern striker fired guns, can be run with optics. But unlike its rivals, no adapter plates are needed for the setup. Springfield is generous enough to incorporate what they call a variable interface system, which consists of self locking pins. Compared to adapter plates, the optic system used in Echelon is a lot simpler. Once you slap a red dot on it, you'll be able to co-witness it with the stock size of the pistol. Sights return to zero relatively fast, as its recoil and muzzle flip are mitigated by its well-balanced design. Daniel Defense H9 Unlike most of the guns here, the DDH9 is just new to the market. Technically, the Hudson H9 has been there for quite some time, but it was considered a flop by many. Fortunately, Daniel Defense adopted the H9 to become the first handgun, and boy, this one really screams quality. One notable aspect about the pistol is that it has a slim profile, so it's a viable choice as a concealed carry pistol. Essentially, it combines the portability and ergonomics of a 1911 pistol and the user-friendliness of a striker-fired gun. Boasting a 15 plus 1 capacity, this 9mm pistol arrives with multiple adapter plates so that you can mount different red dots into it. You can also attach a weapon light on its accessory rail. But of course, the reason I put this gun on this list is its extremely low bore axis. This is one of the lowest bore axis I've seen in recent years, and it made the pistol very manageable. You can hear its muzzle flip like it didn't even exist in the first place. Plus, it is made from an aluminum frame so you can guarantee that the DDH-9 is a rugged defensive gun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more gun videos like this, just click the subscribe button and notification bell. Take care and stay safe.